Hello, welcome everyone. Um, so this is our third lecture of symmetric functions and representation theory. So um, today we're going to cover uh, reducibility and if we have time, um, set the ground for Mashke's theorem. Okay, so let's start with a, with a definition. So last time we saw a definition um, of a G module and we did several examples, like for example, the, 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 the regular representation, if we have a group action, how we can get a representation out of that. And we also saw some examples of uh, a representation from the action of cosets. Um, and we recovered the defining representation from the, um, from, the, uh, from, from the symmetric group acting on the elements one up to n. Okay, but so now um, let's study um, let's do the analog of subspaces uh, um, for, 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 for modules. So um, here the setup is that V is a, is a G module. Okay, and a submodule um, W is a subspace of V. Um, that is closed under the action of, of G. So what does that so what does that mean? So that means that um, G W is in the vector space W for all G in the group and all uh, elements of W. Okay. So uh, in other words. Um, W is G invariant. Okay, so that's um, our first definition of the thing. So uh, let's look at some examples. So if V is a G module, there are two um, submodules that you get for free. So if we let W be the zero vector space or the whole space, these are submodules. Um, and because kind of they're obtained for free, they're called the trivial submodules. Okay. Um, but let's see some examples of non trivial submodules. So um, let's look at the Defining representation um, that we can view as the as the module we obtain if we build a vector space from the the action of the symmetric group on the elements one up to n. So we saw this last time. So this is the defining representation. Okay, um, and let's build a submodule. So. We're going to play with this example quite a bit today. So um, I claim that if we take the vector of the sum of these elements, this is a submodule. So let's see why. So if we have um, any permutation, if the, the way the permutation acts on this vector, Is well, it permutes it. It permutes each element. So this would be whatever um, the whatever pi, the vector that whatever pi sends one to the image of two, and so on. But this is just the vectors one up to n reordered. So this is so we actually get the same vector back. So. Um, so this, so, so it kind of stronger, this, the, the pi, is, any permutation sends this vector to itself. So in particular, it's in W. Okay, so this shows that, um, that W is closed under the action of the symmetric group. So that's why it's a submodule. Okay. And it's, uh, of, it's a submodule of dimension one, because it's the span of one vector. Okay. Um, and um, so, so similarly, I mean, so if we have a, 
a group action on a set and we build a module out of that, if we take the sum of the vectors corresponding to that set, that's going to be a submodule. So for instance, um, if we look at, if G is a group, and we look at the group algebra, if we let uh, W be the span of uh, the sum of the elements of the group, so this is, I'm assuming that G here is of the form, has n elements G1 up to Gn, this is also a submodule. And it's, so, so it's a one-dimensional submodule, and it's it's non-trivial. Okay. Um, so um, whenever you whenever a module has a non-trivial submodule, we say that it's reducible. So that's our second definition. Okay. So our second definition is that um, if V is a is a G module. It is reducible if it has a non-trivial submodule. Okay, and so other than the zero vector space and and itself, um, and if if, he, if if v does not have um, a non-trivial submodule, we say it's irreducible. Okay. Okay. So, for example, um, the so if um, if G is um, S n, well, the the um, so so, uh, so the, the the trivial representation, so the sign representation is irreducible because it's it has degree one. So. Because it has, uh, since the degree is one, so any degree one representation for any for a group is is irreducible. Okay, um, but uh, for instance, the both uh, the defining representation and um, the group algebra, if provided the size of the group is bigger um, than two, are reducible. Because we just saw that, we just saw that if we take the span of the sum of the elements, uh, that's uh, that's uh, a submodule, okay. And so a question that we're going to spend some time answering, as mentioned in the first lecture, is um, how do we determine if a representation is irreducible? So how do we how do we determine if if V is, if our representation V is irreducible. So that's something we're going to worry about, for example, with a symmetric group. Okay? Um, but let's think a little bit back to matrices to see what it means to be, um, to have, a, to, be, to be reducible, to have a submodule. So um, let me make a remark here that um, v, if V is reducible, so if, I, if you have an untrivial submodule, then um, so this so this happens if there is a basis B um, of my of, of my mod, of my module D such that um, the matrix the, the 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 associated matrix Xg is of the is has this fo this following block form zero Cg where sorry this is Cg where um, these where you have this block decomposition um, so for every element of G okay and uh, and a of G and and the sizes stay fixed so they don't depend on G. So this would be some k by k, um, and c of g would be d minus k times d minus k. Okay, but the size here k is independent of of what g is. Okay, so you need to look like this for all g. Okay, the matrices, if there is such a basis. 
Um, so, so let's look at an example. So um, let's go back to that, that sub-module of the defining representation. So we have, uh, let's do it for n equals 3. Okay, and we just saw that this is a, is a sub-representation, like a sub-module, sorry, the sum of the elements. Okay, so um, this is a sub-module. Okay, let me get rid of this here. Okay. So this is sub-module, and if we take a basis of C3, that's um, this vector, and then I just complete the basis, something like this, then um, I'll do an example in a second, but generically, the matrix, the, 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 this three by three matrix is going to look at um, so I'll explain in a second. So why the why the first block is one? So it's size by it's size one by one because W has um, uh, dimension one. So so this k here, this k we see here, okay, is the dimension of W, okay. So uh, so here in this example W has dimension one. That's why this block here this one is is a size one by one, okay. Um, and then I'm gonna have some some entries here, um, okay. So this is how I look for all permutations. Okay, I have this. This I break into this one by one, and two by two blocks in the diagonal, and I have this zero block um, in the bottom left. Okay. Um, so let's do an example. So for, for instance, um, for instance, imagine that you have the permutation. We, we want to look at the matrix associated to the permutation. One goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to one, to this three cycle. Okay. So, um, well, this permutation, it fixes one plus two plus three. It, it's uh, it, no, so, well, it's a submodule, but actually fixes this. So the first column would be one, zero, zero. Okay. But now uh, one two three. How does what does it do to two? Well, it sends it to three. So this would be um, zero zero one. But now um, uh, one the cycle one two three sends three to one. But I need to express one in terms of my basis. So so I have that one two three. When I when I act on three, it sends it to one. But in terms of my basis, this is 1 plus 2 plus 3. And then I have to subtract 2 and 3. Okay? So the so so, so this third column would be 1 minus 1 minus 1. Okay? And and you see this um, we, we see this this block form. Okay? Okay, so 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 uh, this is how this is what hap this is how your matrices look like. If if your if your um, some module is, if your module is reducible, okay, um, but uh, we want now something stronger. We we want not only that you have this block, uh, you you break into these blocks, but we, now we want that B is also zero, okay. So um, so and, and that and we can obtain that with direct sums <coughs> and complements. So let let me. Let's let, let, let's see. So um, so it would be better um, to find to, to, to find the basis uh, to find the basis B such that um, for all elements in the group. Um, the associated matrix of G looks like so looks like a basically a, just it's block diagonal so so you have this A of G and you have this C of G but these would be um, zero matrices on the on the on the, the anti-diagonal blocks 
So um, and this is reminiscent of direct sum. So 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 let's phrase it um, in these terms. So let's recall um, that if we have a vector space v and u and w are subspaces, um, we say that v is the direct sum of u and w if if each, um, v, each element in V can be written uniquely as a sum of an element in U and an element in W. So if I can write it as U plus W, where U is in Q and W is in W. Okay, so this is direct sum. Um, so now um, we have a, defin a definition when, when this happens in, 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 the, in, the, in the world of submodules. So if V is a G module and U and W are submodules such that V is the direct sum of U and W, then we say that U and W are complements of each other. So they're complements of each other. Okay. Um, and if this happens, so let's go back to our matrices. So if so if you know if this happens, then um, there is a basis. There is a basis V of V such that um, well we have this this so we have this block this block diagonals where the, the where the block where the second block on the right of A and the and the block below A are zero are zero matrices. Um, okay, and um, the size of 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 A is the dimension of u and the size of c will be the dimension of w. Okay? And this is more desirable because somehow um, well uh, we 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 are putting um, the submodules together using direct sums. Okay? So um, so 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 if we have a submodule we want to uh, find the complement submodule. Okay? Not just uh, extend the basis like we did in the previous example. Okay, so um, okay, so 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 let's see how so so let's move to so let me write the question so um, so given a submodule of V, um, how can I find Um, it's complement. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, so let's uh, recall the. Oh, this is a bit of a. Oh, yeah, maybe something got erased. But so, so, so let's recall the, the, the how where we were in the previous example when we had the defining representation. And W was the span um, of the sum. Uh, where we left off is that for for the basis um, for this basis, for instance, for the permutation one two three for the long for this three cycle one two three, we had we we had the following. Um, matrix, we had um, okay, so so definitely we haven't yet found the complement because for this particular permutation, 
we don't have uh, the, the, these 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 blocks here are not entirely zero. We have this one. Okay. So so how do we find um, so yeah? So how do we find, for example, the complement in this case? Okay. That's that's kind of the question we're trying to answer. So um, for this, we're going to use orthogonal complements. Okay. And and to talk about orthogonal complements, we need an inner product, and we need that this inner product uh, of the vector space V behaves well with the action of G. Okay, so, um, so, so, so the answer to, to our question is we're going to use um, orthogonal complements. Okay, so let's recall. So, um, so say that V is a, um, is a G module uh, and but it, as a vector space, it also has an inner product. Okay, so so let the let be a G module that but it also has an inner product, and um, we we say that um, so this inner product is uh, so we say that. This inner product is G invariant if um, when we act um, on on U and V by an element G, and we take the inner product, that's the same as the original inner product of U and V. So if this holds for elements of the group and u and v in v then we say that the inner product is g invariant okay so um okay so that's one definition uh, let's recall the definition of an orthogonal complement so if if w is a subspace and we have an inner product the orthogonal complement of w or w perp are all the vectors in the vector space that are orthogonal with all the elements in w. Okay, and uh, so from linear algebra, um, if we if we have a vector space with an inner product. This is a way to construct the complement of um, the vector space W. So we so that so V breaks down as a direct sum of W and its orthogonal complement. Okay, so that is a good way to get a complement if we have a submodule. But we what we don't know at the moment is that this other subspace. So so this so from linear algebra this is a subspace, but we don't know that it is a if we don't know that it, that it's a submodule if v is a module so um, so uh, uh, we need to guarantee that and and what's going to what's going to make this happen for us is going to be this property of the inner product being g invariant okay so when this happens we we are in business okay so let's uh, so, so, so let's see that, so uh, let's put this here. Okay, and um, let's put the definitions here above, so we remember. Okay, um, so now uh, let me state a proposition. Okay, so, so if we have V is a, is a G module, W is a submodule, and V has 
a gene variant in your product, then the orthogonal complement of W not only is a subspace, but it's actually a submodule. Okay. And this is what's going to allow us to find uh, the, or the orthogonal complement of a submodule. Okay. So let's let's um, let's catch the proof. So, um, well, how do we show that a subspace is a submodule? We need to show that it's closed under the action of the group. So, um, so let's take an element in this complement and let's take any element of the group. So we need to show that um, G U stays in the complement. So let's verify this by doing some definition chasing. Okay, so um, let's take an element of W and let's look at the inner product of U with W. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Of uh, not, not of U, but of G U with W. Okay. So we need to check. We need that this. We, we need this to be zero in order to guarantee that um, G U is um, in the orthogonal complement of W. Okay. So we study the inner product of G U and W. Now, because you have um, an in, a G invariant inner product we can multiply both elements by uh, g u, by g, sorry, no, but by g inverse. Mm -hmm. And the inner product does not change. Okay, but then, um, but then, this, so this here is where we used g invariants. Okay, but then this is the same as the inner product of u and g inverse w. Okay, but um, so I think I need more space here. So let's uh, so let's uh, move this here. Okay. Um, yeah, so I just needed a bit more space. Sorry for that. Okay, so we we're left here. Okay, but now um, g in g inverse. W is in the vector space in the subspace W because W is a submodule, so it's closed near the action of G. Okay, um, but then when we look at the inner product of U and G inverse W, we're taking the inner product of U and an element of W, and since U is in the orthogonal complement, that is zero. Okay, and this is because U is in the orthogonal complement. Okay, so let's recap. We showed that for any element u in the orthogonal complement and an element of the group, we showed that the inner product of g u with an element in w is zero. Any element in w is zero. So this shows that g u is also in the orthogonal complement. Okay, and therefore uh, it's it's. The action of the group is closed in the orthogonal complement, and so it is um, a submodule. Okay. Okay. So, so this proposition is saying that if we have a submodule, we can find uh, a complement um, as long as we have a G invariant uh, inner part. Okay. So let's go back um, to our example. Okay. Um, so let me so, so let me get rid of the proof here. Okay, and let's go back to the example. Okay, which was um, 
convenient. So I have it here. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, get rid of this. Okay. So. Okay, so here is the example. Okay. So, um, so again, we have the sum module, but we didn't quite find the complement, right? Because, for example, for this three cycle, we had this lingering one here on the top. Um, so let's find the orthogonal complement. Okay. Let me just get rid of this. Okay. So let's find the orthogonal complement and um, well, I guess we need first an inner product. So, um, so we're going to define an inner product uh, on the basis and this inner product is just going to be the usual inner product if you think of I as the elementary as the ith elementary vector. So this is just the this is um, one if i and j are equal and zero otherwise. So this is the Kronecker delta. Okay. So uh, an extend to get an inner to get an inner product on V. Okay. And I claim that this inner product is SN invariant, in particular S3 invariant. So it's enough if we check the invariance in the basis. So if um, we take a, a permutation in SN um, and we take the inner product of the permutation acting on I and the vector you get if the permutation acts on J, Okay, well, this is, these are going to be other elements of the basis, so this is going to be the Kronecker delta of pi i and pi j, okay? okay that's, that's, the, that's how I define the inner product. But now, pi is a bijection, it's a permutation. So, i and j are equal, so pi, and, pi i and pi j are equal, are, if and only if i and j are equal. So, this is the same as a Kronecker delta i and j, but that's the original inner product of i of the vector corresponding to i and j. Okay, so because of this, it, it is um, SN invariant. Okay, so I have a sub module w, the one dimensional sub module, and I have uh, an inner product that is uh, SN invariant. So I can use the proposition and argue that the orthogonal complement is a submodule and that's that's what I that's what I've been looking for okay so let's get rid of this here okay so then by proposition by proposition 1 the orthogonal complement of w is a submodule Um, so you can check that uh, a basis for this orthogonal complement in S3 is, for example, the vector 1 minus 2 and the vector 1 minus 3. Okay? So you can check that they are orthogonal to the vector 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay? So, um, so then if we take... so Okay, so 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 so, so uh, right. So by proposition one, this is the the orthogonal complement is a submodule, and we already have that v is the direct sum of w and its complement. So and these are submodules, so we're, we're so we're done. So um, if we let our basis now be 
1 plus 2 plus 3. And the basis of this orthogonal complement, okay, then for all permutations in S3, the associated matrix is going to look like 1 on the first block diagonal, and then I'm going to have a 2 by 2 um, block diagonal here, A, B, C, D. Okay? So hopefully you can see this. Um, okay? And then I, su I, I, I succeeded on, on what I wanted to do. Um, so, for instance, um, if we now look at the, the three cycle, one, two, three, that's the one that gave us a problem with the first basis. Well, um, so it sends uh, one, two, three to itself. So this is still one, zero, zero. But now it sends, um, if, we, if, we, if it acts on one minus two, the second vector here, we're going to get two minus three. Okay? And um, 2 minus 3 uh, can be obtained by, um, yeah, so, 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 so let's see how we can get 2 minus 3. So let me make this a bit, uh, a bit slower. So, yeah, so let me get rid of this here. Okay, so let's try to fill this second column here. Okay, so I'm kind of still working here. Okay, so um, if I want to know what the second column is, well, how do I act on my second basis element? 1 minus 2. Well, that's going to be 2 minus 3. Okay, and I can obtain that if I um, take the second element of my basis and I, um, so, well, if, if I take minus the first vector, sorry, minus the second ba vector of the basis, um, plus the third vector, okay? So here I would have 0 minus 1, 1. And if I act on um, 1 minus 3, I'm going to obtain 2 minus 1, and this is just uh, minus the second vector. So this would be like this, okay? But the important thing is that I have these, the, 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 the blocks are just on my diagonal, okay? So uh, I'm a direct sum, okay? So, um, so this way we broke the defining representation into a one-dimensional representation, which is the trivial representation because the vector one plus two plus three gets fixed, and a two-dimension and direct sum with a two-dimensional representation, um, and later we will see that the two-dimensional representation is actually irreducible. Okay, but it's which is not clear from just this small example. Okay. Any so um, if you have any questions. Okay. So. Yeah, so maybe uh, let me just maybe finish this calculation of the third of the third row. So if I act on the third element of the basis, so one gets sent to two, and three gets sent to one, and this is just minus this this the second vector in my basis. So that's why the third column is zero minus one zero. Okay. Okay, so um, so let's state um, the first major result of the course, which is that we can decompose uh, a representation uh, of a finite group uh, into um, into smaller pieces until we get to irreducible representations, um, and and we can write it as a direct sum of irreducible representations. So. Um, so let me state the result. So this is uh, Machke's theorem. 
Okay. Okay. So um, okay. So let me let me set it up. So G is a finite group. And um, V is a non-zero G module, and then V can be decomposed into a direct sum of irreducible submodules. So I can write as a direct sum where each Each WI is um, an irreducible G module, G sub module. Okay, so um, so we can always do that. Okay, and um, so some um, some notes. Uh, we can replace the field in by uh, by, uh, by by another field of characteristic zero or characteristic co prime with the size of the group. Um, but uh, we need the assumption that G is finite. Okay. Uh, I'll, next time I'll mention um, a, a counter example if, if G is not finite. Um, and uh, let's. So what does this mean? So let's look at a corollary of this theorem in terms of matrices. So um, it means so the corollary of this is that if X is a matrix representation of a finite group, of a finite group, um, then uh, of degree of positive degree. degree bigger than zero, um, then there is a matrix T so it's like a change of basis matrix uh, such that for all elements in the group um, Conjugating x, x, xg by t will give us a block um, matrix into k blocks. Everything else is zero, so these are just like the corresponding zero blocks, um, where each xij is an irreducible matrix subrepresentation. Okay, so that's the matrix version of this result. Okay, so in the next class, we'll prove um, Machka's theorem and give the counterexample of why um, the group has to be finite.